one of the top. He's one of the, I think he's one of the top that's been in our sport. He carried us from the, you know, the grimmest days in the, the, in the history of the sport, in my opinion, to back winning races week in and week out. He's a big part of RCR and he'll always be. I'd heard about him through some friends in California. He said, you better keep your eye on this guy. And I said, man, that, that kid's pretty good. So uh, I watched him after that. And then when the opportunity came to look for someone to drive in the Xfinity Series, back then the Bush Series, uh, we made the call to Kevin. We were definitely excited to get someone like him to swing in from watching him and knowing his ability and his car control. And, you know, it's a lot easier to calm people down than it is to, uh, you know, kick them up, try to make them run harder. So we were, we were kind of used to that as well at RCR with having Dale Earnhardt and things like that. You had really someone that hustled hard and uh, you, we knew Kevin was going to be, felt like Kevin was going to be very much a go-getter. His expectations were super high and um, that's what we all had high expectations. And so there was really only one way to go and that was to uh, not, not be able to do what you were expecting to do because you knew himself and you as a company, you know, we were all planning on, you know, rewriting it all. I knew after that first race in 2000 at Daytona, we had something really special. And I could see the direction and attitude. He was only 23 when he started racing for us, and maybe 25 at the time we started full time. And for a young man uh, to come into sport and start racing and doing what he did, he was surpassing our expectations for sure. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. We had just lost our hero. So he was the obvious person to put in the, into the car, especially with his talent. To put Kevin Harvick in that car, I called Bobby uh, Hutchins and said, have Kevin at the shop tonight. We're gonna to go to uh, Rockingham, we're gonna race. I wanna put Kevin in the car. Instantly you went from, you know, someone that people knew was gonna be up and coming and great to replacing arguably the best guy in history, you know, in his car. So I think there was a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know, you can't prepare yourself for what he had to go through, because none of us knew that we were gonna lose Dale. So are you ready for this race? I knew Kevin was strong. He, he was a very strong, mentally prepared person, and he could handle uh, that where I don't think any other 25-year-old young man would have handled it. That was uh, a year I'll always remember with Kevin and how he handled it. And to be able to go to Atlanta and win the first race his third race in a cup car, and go down there and win that race, that was a healing moment. Get up off your seats. Here Gordon they go. For two in a row, trying to set him up. Gordon's gonna make the big move on the inside when they get down here to turn three. Slow car's gonna be in the way. Just, Just like a year ago, he's gonna get him though. Here he's they go. get him. Gordon got loose, it's Harvey. Harvey by inches. Harvey by inches. Harvey by inches. The biggest thing I can remember it was watching him come across the finish line and Kevin made the move on Jeff, Jeff made the move on him to get inside of him and just barely, barely beat him. And we didn't know for until the scoreboard flashed and they announced that the 29 car won the race. And then the emotion really hit us all. I'm telling you, I'm speechless. What could be more fitting? What could be more special? I don't think anyone left their seats. They, the whole stands were full, and they were all holding up three, and the fans loved it. And like I say, it was an emotional trip for all of us.